Hare Krishna, welcome to this episode of Bhagavad Gita and today we will study chapter 9 verse 21 which is the ferris wheel of the material sojourn. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Melitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Kamsa Jeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpata Rubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namon Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminati Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So, chapter 9, text 21, the Ferris wheel of the material sojourn, material journey. The Ferris wheel is, you know, that um, uh, that in the in the fair you will find those wheels. All right. So, tetam bhuktva swarga lokam vishalam. Shine punye martya lokam vishanti evam trai dharma manuprapanna gatagatam kama kama labhante te de tam that bhuktva enjoying svargalokam heaven vishalam vast shine being exhausted punye the results of their pious activities martya lokam to the mortal earth Vishanti, fall down. Evam, thus, trayi, of the three Vedas, dharmam, doctrines, anuprapanna, following, gata, gata, agatam, death and birth. Kama, kama, desiring sense enjoyments, labhante, attain. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, Esu Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Translation, when they have thus enjoyed vast heavenly sense pleasure and the results of their pious activities are exhausted, they return to this mortal planet again. Thus, those who seek sense enjoyment by adhering to the principles of the three Vedas achieve only repeated birth and death. <clears throat> Purport. One who is promoted to the higher planetary systems enjoys a longer duration of life and better facilities for sense enjoyment. Yet one is not allowed to stay there forever. One is again sent back to this earth upon finishing the resultant fruits of pious activities. He who has not attained perfection of knowledge, as indicated in the Vedanta Sutra, Janmadhyas Sayataha, or in other words, he who fails to understand Krishna, the, the cause of all causes, becomes baffled about achieving the ultimate goal of life and is thus subjected to the routine of being promoted 
to the higher planets and then again coming down as if situated on a ferris wheel which sometimes goes up and sometimes comes down the purport is that instead of being elevated to the spiritual world from which there is no longer any possibility of coming down one simply revolves in the cycle of birth and death on higher and lower planetary systems one should better take to the spiritual world to enjoy an eternal life full of bliss and knowledge and never return to this miserable material existence <clears throat> so it's quite self explanatory so this is in continuation of the previous verse 920 त्रैविद्यामाम सोम पापूत पापा यज्ञै रिष्ट्वा स्वर्गतिं प्रार्थयन्ते ते पुण्यमासाद्य सुरेन्द्र लोकम अश्नन्ति दिव्यान दिवि देव भोगान दोस हू स्टडी द वेदस एंड ड्रिंक द सोम जूस सीकिंग द हेवनली प्लैनेट्स वर्शिप मी इनडायरेक्टली प्यूरिफाइड ऑफ सिनफुल रिएक्शंस दे टेक बर्थ ऑन द पायस हेवनली प्लैनेट ऑफ इंद्र वेयर दे एंजॉय गॉडली डिलाइट्स so <clears throat> swargalokam vishalam is certainly vishalam means great or vast broad so there is vast sense pleasure in the heavenly planets there is um, there are different grades of residential quarters of different grades of uh, piety of living entities so um those who are more pious of course have more facilities for sense enjoyment and those who are not they have less and those who are very sinful they are they are put in uh, troubling situations like hellish planets so tetam bhuktva bhuktva means they enjoy स्वर्गलोकम विशालम क्षीणे पुण्यम मर्त्यलोकम विशंति नो दिस इज द थिंग व्हाट एवर दे हैव गेन्ड विद ऑल देयर अम हार्ड वर्क बिकॉज़ इट एक्चुअली गो टेक्स हार्ड वर्क टू रीच द हेवनली प्लैनेट्स नॉट द हार्ड वर्क लाइक द साइंटिस्ट्स ट्राई लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल नाउ इंडिया इज ट्राइंग टू गो टू द मून चंद्रयान 3 नाउ they may try all these things and even if they succeed let's say they succeed what are they going to do of course they are, they what they are sending is an unmanned uh, mission now we don't know where they exactly is going but according to vedas it won't reach the moon proper said sometimes um it can be the rahu planet that they are reaching um so anyway even if they reach the moon let's say what are they going to do they're going to come back so what is the value of such a such an exercise what is the value these people they can't even go and see anything on the moon but even if by sacrificial performances by demigod worship and that's the actual way to go to the moon and uh experience everything that is there uh, these so called scientists they said they went to the moon and then got back with some black rock when the moon is shining so brightly uh, they want us to believe that that they went to the moon um and then they saw nothing else barren land but here we find that the moon is full of life in fact the enjoyment enjoyments found in the moon on the moon planet are far far superior uh, to that of the earth so these informations are given in our vedic literature now kshine punya martilokam vishanti even if we go there we will come down and what to speak of moon a brahma bhuvanal lokan punaravartin arjuna mame maam upetya to punarjanma what is that janmana vidyate from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest all are places of misery where in repeated birth and death take place or one who attains to my abode o son of kunti 
never takes birth again. So there is this, you know, wheel. We are just a rupe brahmanda brahmite brahmanda brahmanda brahmite yantra rudhani maya you know um chaitanya charitamrita it is said brahmanda brahmite and in bhagavad gita also brahmayan sarva bhutani yantra rudhani maya so brahmayan means traveling here and there um, so the real way to travel to other planets is to first of all qualify ourselves the travel is dependent not on the or not on the distance or on the fuel that we use um, or other such physical uh, considerations the travel will be possible by shifting our existence either into the mode of goodness or mode of passion or mode of ignorance accordingly we will experience life in different planets and even in the same planets different species different atmospheres habitats so in this way now for example we are on the earth now there are so many animals on the earth the life that they experience for example a lion in the african forest his life is very different from the life of humans on earth although it's the same earth his world is totally different his understanding of life and his surroundings and his mission is just eating sleeping of course nothing else but very different experience even on the same planet um compared to us and even among human beings there is very different experience for the poor and the rich and somebody in the one country and somebody in another country there is a vast amounts of differences and who ordains these um facilities or the lack of them it is the supreme lord according to our karmana daivanetrena jantur dehopapatte so he awards us according to our work now um in this case of the material world as we are moving here and there e brahmanda bhramite kono bhagyavan ji one who is actually fortunate he will come out of this ferris wheel um there is another <laughs> okay ferris wheel is a kind of a, is, is a very good example there is another wheel which is a hamster wheel a hamster it's like in the rodent family so they will put sometimes they have this wheel for the hamster and it is going and going and going and then it goes nowhere so that is the position of um people in the material world uh, but a person who takes somehow as a, or other is fortunate to have get a association of a bona fide spiritual master guru ए ब्रह्मांड भ्रमिते कोनो भाग्यवान जीव गुरु कृष्ण प्रसाद पाए भक्ति लता बीच सो ही विल गेट द सीड ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस एंड बाय दैट ऑल सेसेशन ऑफ मटेरियल लाइफ इज कॉज्ड एंड ही रिटर्न्स बैक होम बैक टू गॉडहेड सो द स्पिरिट द स्पिरिचुअल वर्ल्ड इज कॉल्ड वैकुंठ वेयर देयर इज विगत कुंठ यस्माद इति वैकुंठ where there is no miseries material miseries that is vaikuntha um, but here marthalokam this earth is called marthalokam martha means um here let's see what is what it is translated as marthalokam to the mortal earth but uh, martha means death mrityu uh, mrityu means death martha means of death that means this planet um is a place of death is an abode of death so in the heavenly planets the city of indra is called amaravati mara means death amara amara means no death but it does not actually mean no death although the name is like that but it is only because they have very long life very very long life and their death also is not exactly like ours uh, not very gross like ours in fact first of all they have very subtle bodies the demigods 
because even ghosts have subtle bodies they are higher than humans um, let's see this gradation it's interesting i think you, you would have seen this many times 5 5 21 and 22 bhuteshu virudh bhuteshu virudhya uduttamaye sare srupasteshu sabodhanishthah tato manushyah pramathas tato pi gandharva siddha vibudhanugaye devasurebhyo maghavat pradhana dakshadayo brahma sutastu tesham bhava par sotha virincha virya samat paroham dvija deva deva pramathah the ghostly spirits so of the two energies manifest spirit and dull matter beings possessing living force that is vegetables grass trees and plants are superior to dull matter stone earth etc superior to non moving plants and vegetables are worms and snakes which can move superior to worms and snakes are animals that have developed intelligence superior to animals are human beings and are and superior to human beings are ghosts because they have no material bodies i mean no gross material body they have a subtle body superior to ghosts are the gandharvas and superior to them are the siddhas superior to the siddhas are the kinnaras and superior to them are the asuras Superior to the Asuras are the demigods, and of the demigods, Indra, the king of heaven, is supreme. Superior to Indra are the direct sons of Lord Brahma, sons like King Daksha, and supreme among Brahma's sons is Lord Shiva. Since Lord Shiva is the son of Lord Brahma, Brahma is considered superior, but Brahma is also subordinate to me, the supreme personality of Godhead. Because I am inclined to the Brahmanas, the Brahmanas are the best of all. So this is the gradation. Um, so the point is, the point is that ghosts are superior to human beings and the devatas there are way more superior to the ghosts so they have a subtle body their death is very different than our death now a very significant point here <laughs> is me- the the um, the mood in which this verse is said it's not very encouraging to go to the heavenly planets right you see um it's actually condemned is ridiculed um sorry you see shene punya martilokam vishanti gatagatam kama labha kama kama labhante so it is actually condemned this interplanetary travel is condemned and today let's compare that with today's um scientific advancement people like elon musk who are trying to you know launch rockets into space and going to mars are considered to be at the very forefront um frontiers of human advancement and india is you know very excited about the chandrayaan 3 mission trying to get a soft landing on the moon now these things are considered like wow we are just you know we are at the absolute forefront and the, you know we are the trailblazers we are the leaders we are the you know trend setters or whatever you know mankind um, sh- i mean culture shifters or whatever but this they are simply exploring how to even go and what what sort of you know machine to go with and you know, how to actually survive this is what he's saying like um Elon Musk once said if i have to die i would rather die on mars than on earth because that would be novel so th- <laughs> the point is marti lokam vishan devlo i mean this is this is the level of their aspirations that's it that's it and they think they're very very advanced and bhagavad gita is talking of interplanetary travel not like this great advancement you know the, the zenith of technological pursuit you know no it is a cheap skate thing you know which only unintelligent people are you know interested in you see <laughs> they are not very intelligent 
उसे ये प्यान्य देवता भक्ता यजंते श्रद्धयान्विता ते भी मामेव कौन थे यजंते आविधि पूर्वकम सो टू गो टू द प्लैनेट्स ऑफ दोस डेमी गॉड्स वे टू वर्शिप द डेमी गॉड्स दैट विल कम लेटर 925 सो द प्रोसेस इज बाय यज्ञ नॉट बाय दिस दिस मेथड इट्स अ वेरी सटल मेथड दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन दिस एज दोस मंत्र चैंटिंग द द द काइंड ऑफ purity that is required to perform yagya yagnik performances um the tapasya that is required none of that is available in kali yuga so these things are closed the the heaven the doors to heaven are closed for people in kali yuga but of course people like to say oh my my grandfather went to heaven my mother went to heaven my grandmother went to heaven it's a good uh, consolation for us we do not know what the ha- actually happened to that person hmm. see because we can know to an extent to we, we can get an indication of what happened to that person by the la- by the kind of life he or she has led um, but people in general they don't know all these things they don't know these laws they just say for you know comforting themselves and that's all um, if if they really believe if they really really believe that oh he went to heaven then my question is why are they so excited about interplanetary travel mars moon or whatever because if somebody is going to heaven after death that means he is going to another planet another place of dwelling not on the earth that means he is already having interplanetary travel they are kind of accepting it but they accept it only in name because if they really accept it they won't be too surprised about traveling to other planets and life on other planets none of that but we just say these things hmm. not we i mean people in general we understand what is what um, thanks to scriptures like bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam when krishna reveals then yes then we will know so this is what actually excited me when i was starting out in krishna consciousness because i was coming from a very very scientific mindset and i was trying to understand theory of relativity quantum physics and interplanetary travel um aero uh, aerospace engineering um defense technology all these were my passions my were my areas of interest i was very much interested in space planets universes the possibility of universe at that time i did not know there were many universes but i read a scientific article in a magazine when i was 16 i think that there is a possibility <clears throat> that a scientist one scientist said there could be a possibility of a multiverse that means simultaneously many many universes it was like wow many universes wow that's exciting you know <laughs> that's the thought i had so i really wanted to know a formula or a, or a method to find all this out that was my goal when i was a teenager i was trying all sorts of things i was trying to find it out from science and also i heard about zen buddhism and meditation and you know going to like supernatural states or whatever trying to access some other realm of existence you know <laughs> now it's laugh worthy but or cringe worthy rather but at that time it was oh um that was my passion i mean i, I really wanted to know and i w- i would want to try anything that gets me to that state or to get the answers so when i started reading bhagavad gita the the questions to like who am i i, I always wondered in this whole vast sky and vast universe and who am i i'm so small where do i belong what what is my nature and where where do i fit in so in this way i was trying to think now that was answered my thirst for knowledge about interplanetary travel and relativity relative the 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 relativity of time einstein's theory of relativity you know opens up to this concept opens us to the concept of the relativity of time that means a time experienced by one by one person is not the same as time experienced by another person 
um, especially physically speaking at the speed of light or at the i mean at speeds comparable to the speed of light uh, the time thing changes there is a dilation of time and all the kind of things um now these things these concepts were like very otherworldly very exciting very novel very exotic at that time but when i saw 8th chapter 17th verse krishna just says you know sahasra yogam paryantam aharya brahmano vidu you know that was ratram yuga sahasrantam teho ratra vidojana by human calculation a thousand ages together form the duration of brahma's one day and such also is the duration of his night and this is just after the verse which says from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest all are places of misery <laughs> wherein repeated birth and death take place but one who attains to maya bodo son of kunti never takes birth again and then he explains uh, this uh, uh, relativity of time i was thinking wow what i am like you know thinking about as a great thing is kind of condemned in bhagavad gita <laughs> how much more is there in bhagavad gita is it's just i mean i read things like you know because i was interested in defense technology i was interested in martial arts so when i read things like this for example in the second chapter the soul can never be cut into pieces by any weapon nor burned by fire nor moistened by the water nor withered by the wind you see in purport all kinds of weapons swords flame weapons rain weapons tornado weapons etc are unable to kill the spirit soul it appears that there are there were many kinds of weapons made of earth water air ether etc in addition to the modern weapons of fire even the nuclear weapons of the modern age are classified as fire weapons but formerly there were other weapons made of all different types of material elements firearms were counteracted by water weapons which are now unknown to modern science nor do modern scientists have knowledge of tornado weapons how is like what they are talking about the soul and talking about these unheard of technologies as if they are like you know nothing oh they cannot harm the soul but wait what did you just say tornado weapons rain weapons what what are you talking you are talking about something which is not even heard of but it is talked about like it's a side subject and not much importance is like yeah you know that kind of attitude towards um these kinds of you know otherworldly technologies so that's what really gripped me to the bhagavad gita these things of course these are not like very <laughs> i mean um, lofty things to be excited about but just to see that bhagavad gita treats these modern science which i was thinking was the right at the forefront i was thinking i was interested in the most highest thing to find out you know the universe and all these things i was i was thinking my mind in my mind that i was at the forefront of scientific thinking you know the ego is like super high no when i saw the bhagavad gita i was super humbled i mean i was like wow i got something that is even higher okay let me catapult Oof, i jumped so <laughs> that's what got me excited so this is this this is defense technology i mean the kind of weapons i was like you know what this is this was my interest sorry this class is very much about me now but um it's just the excitement <laughs> so when i was a teenager even when i was 12 11 12 13 14 i was very interested in defense technology i was i saw every war movie that came out came on the hbo and you know those um, english movie channels that you know there used to be a few war movies like u571 there was a movie i remember one or two so every any fighting army or navy or any strategic movie kind of thing i would watch any martial art movies i would watch any documentaries on you know defense technology and i would watch um if any article came on defense technology like for example india was buying some kind of a flight fighter planes sukhoi jets from russia uh some mig 29 and all of that then i would just read everything i would study of course that that time we used to play some video games because of which i came to know guns and the bullets the size of the bullets 5.56 mm rounds 
which is the American guns, the machine guns, the 7.62 uh, millimeters round of the AK-47, which is a Russian gun. I mean, all these kinds of things and 0.9 mm pistol, you know. So this kind of, I was very much interested in these things and all the technology and any article that comes in the newspaper about any defense procurement or oh, India bought this, 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 this. I would just read from the first to the last word of that article, however long it is. I was so interested. And now I, I said this before, I think in one of the live streams, but I wanted to, I, I read the autobiography of APJ Abdul Kalam, um, who was the president of India. And he was a you know, defense technology expert. I mean, he was the leader, I mean, in India, in the ISRO, uh, not ISRO, not Space Research Organization, what is the DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. So he was at the forefront. He was the leader of the entire defense program, defense technology program. Then um, I read his autobiography. I, I was super inspired. I think I just thought, yes, I'll become aeronautical engineering. I'll become the defense. Um, I want to, so this was my interest. I wanted to make a shield for the entire India that would intercept any missile ever thrown to that country. So this was my kind of interest. So I was so interested at 15, 16 years old. And at 17, I got the Bhagavad Gita. And when I read these things, I, what? Nobody even heard these things. What? Fire weapons, water weapons, air weapons, earth weapons, tornado weapons. Mind-boggling. So these, thing, these things attracted me even more to Bhagavad Gita. And the, the way in which they're described is not like, hey, water weapons. No, no, no. Water weapons. Uh, you know, those water weapons, they can't do anything to the soul. Fire weapons, they can't do anything. Wind weapons, nothing they can do. It's like, <laughs> in a disparaging manner, <laughs> they're at risk. I was like, what is this? Then, um, um, then yeah, this today's verse. Interplanetary travel, which was another passion, another one of my passions. It's like, wow, interplanetary travel. Huh? What? Exhausted, return to the mortal planet again. Ah, the less intelligent people do this. Oh, really? <laughs> I was like, what? So then the kind of lofty philosophy that is there in Bhagavad Gita shone forth. It's like everything that I thought was, you know, and I was interested in martial arts, self-defense. And I wanted to, everything. I had always, I wanted to be the top in everything. I was nowhere actually. I never participated in any competition. I never <laughs> did anything like that. But in my head, I was always wanting to be the top. So I wanted to be the topmost martial artist in the world. <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and I wanted to teach martial arts. Because in India, when I wanted to learn Kung Fu, there was no Kung Fu school in India at that time. Some karate schools were there. No, no I wanted Kung Fu. Because I saw so many Shaolin Kung Fu movies that I wanted Kung Fu. So... What happened? There was no Kung Fu teacher around. Um, so I bought a book and I was a bookworm. Anywhere I go, if I see books, I'll just get attracted and I'll stuck there. So we went to some book, bookstore and then I found this uh, two books on um, Kung Fu. I bought the books. I was practicing from the book Kung Fu in India. So I was thinking I'll become a master, self-taught. And... I would teach self-defense all over India to everyone, like as many people as possible. So there, all these kind of ideas I used to have. I wanted to go to China, learn everything, come back to India, set up schools and, you know, all kinds of weapons and everything. So, I mean, this is the kind of things I used to have in my teenager. I was very much, you know, big, big dreams. Thanks to... Shila Prabhupada, the, the devotees who sold me the Bhagavad, Prabhupada book, Bhagavad Gita, I was saved from all of that uh, fruitless endeavors <laughs> and took to Bhagavad Gita. And it was, you know, totally transformative, totally. And this is the thing. Today, still people are very much... Um, excited about these kind of technology. I was laughing at, I mean, in 2020 when the COVID was happening, um, I think just after COVID or something like that, 2021 or something, there was this, um, 
I think Virgin Atlantic, what is that guy's name? Branson. Richard Branson. And after that, Jeff Bezos. You know, they went to this space and came back. Came back. I was thinking of this very verse today. Tetam Bhukta Svargalokam Vishalam, Shine Punyam Arthilokam Vishalam. They did not even go to Svargalokam Vishalam. They just jumped like monkey. Monkey jumps. Not very great. They just jumped a little bit higher, that's all. And came back. And within seconds, they came back, within minutes. And they considered, oh, we're going to open up space travel for, you know, the, the public, you know, the commercial space travel, uh, big, big names. And I saw, I saw the entire live stream of Richard Branson. Was it Richard Branson? No, not that one. Another kind of NASA mission, I don't know. Um, maybe they were going to the space station or something like that. International Space Station, whatever. Um, there was some event like that at uh, the launch of it. Yeah, it was not. It was not Richard Branson event. It was the the other one, NASA. So I was just watching the live stream of that. Not because I was interested. Uh, not in the least interested now. But I was think I was just looking at how they were doing such a live stream because I, I do live streams like this and I have connectivity problems. I have all kinds of things sometimes. I was thinking. How do they do this kind of event as a live stream? And people were watching half a million on YouTube. I don't know how many on Facebook. On YouTube, half a million people were watching. Spacecraft going to the International Space Station. And here we have 921 verse. It, it's for less intelligent people and only 30 people are watching this. So, Prabhupada wrote a book, Easy Journey to Other Planets. I was very much interested in that subject at the time, you know, I, I took up that book early on and then I read the whole book and I was super interested, super inspired. So now, yeah, what I was saying was um, um, martial arts. I was interested so much in martial arts. But then, you know, when Bhagavad Gita showed up and then I read, even if you are, you know, the best martial artist, you cannot escape death. And Bruce Lee is the perfect example. He was one of the top most martial artists of the world and you know he just died at 32 like he could do nothing to defend himself against that yeah not worth it i was thinking i was thinking even if i become 20 years you know rigorous training and i become an expert martial artist what's the point what's the point so bhagavad gita basically made fun of every single desire i had every single thought or plan or you know dream I, I had Bhagavad Gita just made fun of every every one of those and showed me something which I could never ever imagine so that is Krishna Krishna consciousness so it is the highest nothing can even come close what is considered to be the greatest achievement of humankind today and another thing Elon Musk is credited for the first ever man to achieve such a huge thing as launching a rocket into space and bringing it back and landing it on the earth again. Of course, yeah, technology wise, it's a great achievement. But we have been doing this since time immemorial. We landed on the, in fact, we landed on the other planet. We have been going to different, different planets and coming back here, soft landing. We are taking birth from the womb of mother. <laughs> so, this is this has been happening. Just I remember. And, and this is, you see, Shine Punya Marthi Loka Mission. You go up and coming down, go up and coming down. What is this? If, if you can go up and successfully come back alive, or at least the possibility of coming back alive, uh, and the rocket also intact without being destroyed, if that is a great achievement, and here it is touted as a, you know, a thing of the less intelligent, an engagement of the less intelligent people, then how much more lofty is Bhagavad Gita? We should just compare, the, we should not just, you know, read these verses and, you know, yeah, you know, heavenly planets, yeah, okay, next. No, we should just consider how lofty it is, how lofty our, 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 Krishna consciousness is actually. Um, 
एवं त्रयी धर्म अनुप्रपन्न एंड दिस इज द इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग त्रयी धर्म दोस फॉलो द थ्री वेदर्स द डॉक्टर्स ऑफ द थ्री वेदर्स सो द वेदर्स हैव फॉर्मूले फॉर गोइंग टू दिस प्लैनेट्स एंड पीपल से ओ Well, those are all old time barbarians you know one american i mean one westerner he was commenting on the rigveda and he was saying it seems to it seems that when people chanted rigveda in those times people at least started agriculture at the time because agriculture was mentioned farm field was mentioned and you know cow was mentioned so they were rearing cows and they were doing agriculture at the time you know that means mankind has come out already advanced from the at least indian population had advanced from the savage savages that man was they think man was a savage and he was living in the forest hunter gatherer you know hunting animals and from there man has already become civilized and started agriculture already during the people i mean during the time when rigveda was chanted and they and they give a date for rigveda which they say 3 to 3 to 4000 bc stupid nonsense i mean people since millions of years were chanting rigveda and uh, people were doing not just agriculture they did everything interplanetary travel everything they were doing and in the trai dharma manupranna gatagatam kama kama labhante yeah, this whole interplanetary travel is compared to a ferris wheel simply going round and round and going up going down going up. it is a mockery bhagavad gita is mocking making a mockery out of this whole space program of modern scientists or so called forward thinkers like elon musk and um, isro who are doing the chandrayaan 3 mission and all of this what is this let's say even if they achieved what is the point <laughs> somebody wrote recently i saw i saw a quote scientists are now trying to find life on other planets and killing the life on this one <laughs> they want to kill life on in this planet and they want to find life on another planet this is their program <clears throat> and people like stephen hawking who was so called you know physicist a complete atheist already he is his he was suffering so much and on the top of it he is an atheist avowed atheist so anyway um he said that this one planet by the end of um 2000 the year 2200 or something or 2100 or 2200 this planet won't be enough anymore we need at least two planets and therefore the space program should absolutely be supported it's not some fantasy you know wasting away of billions of dollars no 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 it's a necessity for which all human kind should be thankful for that's the kind of message he he said so they come up with some ideas and validate their whimsical experiments with space travel and everything um and then make you think that they're actually doing a good thing and make you appreciate them oh elon musk oh he's doing like you know really good stuff so so <laughs> we appreciate rubbish so that's the power of america americans are very good at marketing trash they can make cash out of trash and that's what they are very good at experts at marketing that's why prabhupada went to america made them market the movement succeeded they were expert marketers nobody can top them so when they do something stupid and they want to justify it is this they are just playing i think somebody has sent me a quote when when a, when he is a boy he he plays with toys when he grows up the toys also grow that means he plays with bigger toys now this all this you know space travel and all this this is just playing with bigger toys that's it not only space travel and i mean everything is this playing with toys he is not becoming serious or mature to understand who he is and what is he supposed to do in life nothing he is playing with bigger toys that's all 
and to justify and if you if you do such things if you play if a, if a, if a completely grown man he, if he plays with toys you would start you know condemning him so in order for you not to condemn him he will market it as the most noblest thing that is ever happening and anything close to that i mean anything such um, such experiments will the, the person will become get nobel prize a nobel prize i mean what is so great about it and then they will say oh this is very important we have to go to other planet because this planet will be sufficiently overpopulation see 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 huh. but actually there is no such thing as an overpopulation and i i watched a video uh, which my brother shared uh, <clears throat> um what is his name uh, guru prasad or somebody so he was giving a lecture in india it was on uh, i forgot his name um so he was giving a lecture on the eating of um how to uh, sustainable eating sustainable diet sustainable food so he is saying that if the whole world ate like americans ate we need at least two and a half earths to supply that food but if people ate like indians ate six times the current population easily can be fed he was saying <clears throat> i mean just imagine that means the way indians cook food and eat first of all vegetarian based diet americans just eat meat and beef and everything so he gave an example i mean no he he gave this came to my mind or how maybe he gave whatever no i think yeah he was saying something um so he was saying that the same amount of land will produce way less meat and way more um, um plant based diet for example if you say if you see in the african you know those national geographic kind of videos wildlife videos where african plains uh, you know or the sahara not the sahara Uh, serengeti in uh, africa and places like that now the whole many many hectares or square kilometers of land you will see thousands of zebra thousands of bison or you know but only a handful of lions or cheetah or you know like that so the same land can maintain that many thousands of you know uh, herbivorous animals but carnivores only handful because is this not possible suppose if there are 100 lions in one place they will just eat eat each other up of course they won't eat uh, lions don't eat lions but they kill each other because they want supremacy because everybody is fighting for food then you know nobody will have if 100 lions are there which herbivorous animal is going to pass by but thousands pass by because five okay we can deal with it if anything we will run so and that is one thing and these 100 also they won't stay together and if no herbivorous animal come then these 100 will do what they will fight among each other and kill each other because everybody is a competition to another so meat eating even in animal kingdom we can see how much land is required to maintain one meat eater and how much land is required to maintain one herbivorous animal and it's true Uh, you don't need that many resources that much water you don't need that much uh, this thing to maintain um, vegetarian diet compared to a non vegetarian diet so india is still a lot of people eat vegetarian even the meat eaters eat vegetarian many days of the week sometimes meat of course now it is increasing more and more but it's a very unsustainable way of eating so it's a my point is it's a total mismanagement prabhupada already said 10 times the current world population at that time it was like 3 million 3 billion or 2 billion or something Ten times the world's population, I think three billion at the time. Ten times the current world population can be fed. I mean, thirty billion people can easily be fed. Prabhupada was saying. Um, so the only question is of mismanagement. So much food is wasted, both both cooked food and also uh, um, raw, like grains and everything. Wasted. So much is wasted. In fact. there is one business model i i forget the business uh, i mean entrepreneur in america 
I think he's an Indian American or something. I don't know. So he made a business out of food waste. You know what he did? Even in Singapore, I see this. We were, we go to the market, vegetable market. Like tomorrow early morning, we're going to the market as well. Now, every week we go like that to collect vegetables, and we get them donated. We ask them to donate, and they they donate to the temple, and we collect a van load of vegetables like that. Now. sometimes the vendors they say they tell us oh i am giving this to you because i cannot sell this i said what happened to this this looks perfectly fine no the shape is a bit odd so nobody will buy really shape is a bit odd. the color is a bit odd so nobody will buy but perfectly good nothing wrong said, okay we will gladly take <laughs> so um so that's the that's the thing and so what i was saying is an entrepreneur in in um, in america so what he saw that people you know when there is a produce of say carrots but it's a little bit out of shape people won't like to buy they want to like buy the bright straight carrot and not the biggest fattest one oh wow this is good maybe that's full of chemicals and whatever organic plants are usually a little bit crooked like if you see maybe because i don't know why but maybe the good ones also will grow but whatever so the the imperfect ones in quality control they used to be um thrown and they used to just throw them and then he was picking apples at uh, some orchard and some apples were good but you know not perfect but good can eat um but uh, the so when he was plucking apples and then the the, the oh, boss said okay this you know, throw to throw so he collected like so many imperfect apples like imperfect looking apples and then he said the boss said throw So he was thinking, okay. Then he took the apples, and then you know he went and you know, see if he can sell, and people were buying. So he started a business. He used to have you know relationships with all the farmers, and whatever was rejected by them, he bought at very very cheap price, and then he sold it at good profit and made multi million dollars. This was his business model. So honestly, there is so much food waste in every form, cooked food. you know you eat a little bit and then the rest of it throw that kind of food waste and food waste just because it is imperfect and thrown so many poor people are there in the world so mismanagement because of lack of krishna consciousness hmm. so if become if we become krishna conscious um, if we have extra surplus then we will give to other con- some other country which needs so in this way we can you know we can always uh, share understanding that krishna is the original owner of all of this you know out of goodwill we can always share krishna's resources so for all problems krishna consciousness is necessary <clears throat> now the other thing about this going to other higher planets is not that you know you enjoy there for some time and then after that come back to this same mortal world that's not the only downside or disadvantage of going to the heavenly planets the other disadvantage is this the same 11320 of shrimad bhagavatam evam lokam param vidyan nashvaram karma nirmitam satulyatishay dhamsam yatha mandala vartinam one cannot find permanent happiness even on the heavenly planets so not only will you go to the heavenly planets and come back after enjoying a lot of you know for long years but actually those that enjoyment is completely skewed it, it is it looks like enjoyment from here but when you go there you see it explains here one cannot find permanent happiness even on the heavenly planets which one can attain in the next life by ritualistic ceremonies and sacrifices even in material heaven the living entity is disturbed by rivalry with his equals and envy of those superior to him and since one's residence in heaven is finished with the exhaustion of pious votive activities the denizens of heaven are afflicted by fear anticipating the destruction of their heavenly life so there is rivalry there is you know envy there is you know all these things thus they resemble kings who though enviously admired by ordinary citizens are constantly harassed by enemy kings and who therefore never attain actual happiness so this is this is heaven 
while we are there. Now there is envy and all these things, rivalry and everything is there. Apart from this, we think, oh, heavenly planet, planets are good, you know. Yeah, let's see how good they are. 519. Oh, people, especially in India, oh, Swarga Prapti ho gaya. Mera, mera pita ji ka Swarga Prapti ho gaya. Mera dada ji ka Swarga Prapti ho gaya. Prapti ho gaya. Dekhenge kaise, kaise hai Swarga. Kya Prapti hua agar. Let's see what is happening in Swarga. They say, oh, you know, Swarga, my, my grandfather, my father, they all went to Swarga, you know, went to heaven. Kim Dushka Rairna Kratubhista Povra Tair Dana di Birva Dujayena Palguna Nayatrana Rayana Pada Pankajas Mete Pramushta Tishayendri Utsavat Indri Utsavat Pramushta Tishayo Pramushta Tishayo Pramushta Tishayendri Utsavat The demigods continue, after performing the very difficult tasks of executing Vedic ritualistic sacrifices, undergoing austerities, observing vows and giving charity, we have achieved this position as inhabitants of the heavenly planets. But what is the value of this achievement? Here we are certainly very engaged in material sense gratification and therefore we can hardly remember the lotus feet of Lord Narayana. Indeed, because of our, our excessive sense gratification, we have almost forgotten his lotus feet. So, doesn't look like the heavenly planets are a very good place to go to. <laughs> in fact, Sri Prabhupada once said in the morning walk, you can see the video of it as well, where Prabhupada said, this earth is just the right place for spiritual advancement. There is not too much suffering. There is not too much enjoyment. Just the right combination of happiness and distress that would easily evoke um, the dormant Krishna consciousness and people become religious in this in this life. If you have too much happiness, you will forget. If you have too much distress also, you cannot remember. Um, of course, a pure devotee can remember at any time, but for a commoner, um, he has to approach with a stable mind, with a, you know, uh, at least some... Um, with a peace of mind. Like you see here in uh, 266 of Bhagavad Gita, what is said? Nasti buddhira yuktasya nacha yuktasya bhavana nacha bhavayata shanti rashandasya kutah sukham. One who is not connected with the Supreme in Krishna consciousness can have neither transcendental intelligence nor a steady mind without which there is no possibility of peace. And how can there be any happiness without peace? So, if one is Krishna conscious, then yes, transcendental intelligence, then steady mind, and then there will be peace. So, of course, Krishna consciousness is the prerequisite for having peace, but to execute Krishna consciousness, to understand the philosophy, one has to be, you know, sufficiently free from um, distress, in order for uh, him to uh, be able to employ his mental faculty in thinking about the subject matter. If he is suppose very hungry, how is he going to think anything but food? So, of course, the solution for that is prasadam distribution. Um, apart from that, once he is that basic necessities are you now satisfied, then he can actually spend some time thinking about this. So, and then of course, once we become Krishna conscious, then we become completely peaceful. Anywhere. Narayana para sarve na kutaschana bibhati svargapa vargana rakesha pitulyartha darshana. So, even in heaven or hell or even in liberation, the pure devotee doesn't mind. Anything is okay for him because in all places he is Krishna conscious. In all places. And he is peaceful. He is peaceful everywhere. Alright, so I think I would end it there. So any questions or comments on this? 
topic. Ghosts are stronger than humans without having muscles. Is this why Nidarasimha Akali teaches people to walk with the gravity when teaching Shastra Vidya? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who is a Nidarasimha Akali. Yeah, they are stronger muscles. What kind of muscle strength is that? Will ISKM support Nidar Simha Akali, Surjit Simha Bans, in his educational program of teaching of Shastra Vidya Dhanurved? Why we should support anything? What is the use of just Dhanurved? I don't know who is Nidar Simha Akali, but whatever. Um, let him teach for that, that is his passion. You know, let him teach. But the thing is, it will not help. Nothing will help. In this Kali Yuga, and in any Yuga, Dhanurved won't help. But uh, it will help for the Kshatriyas. But the thing is, the main thing is to become Krishna conscious. Everything else is secondary. Yes, Kshatriyas need Dhanurved and all this. Thing. But now with however Dhanurved, if you have a missile, we cannot use the Dhanurved like, you know, the mystical weapons and all of that. And if we start shooting arrows with our hand and then one machine gun comes, how are we going to counter that? Because we don't have the mystical weapons like those days. Hmm. So anyway, maybe self-defense, I don't know. But that all won't help. The main thing is Krishna consciousness. So I don't know why you're asking these questions because I don't know whether you're interested in the class at all. Because don't just ask for asking sake. You ask questions to increase your understanding of the subject. Don't come and interview me. Or oh, will you do this? Will you do that? Okay, that that is this. This is that. You know what is your opinion about? Don't ask these kind of interviews questions. I'm not here conducting a press conference. Okay, I'm here trying to share the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, and let us you ask questions which will increase the understanding of this verse or the subject at hand, but not some irrelevant questions. Okay, first learn how to ask. Even attend a class. Learn how to listen first. Every time you're coming up with you know wild, wild something, stop it. You know, it's not helping anyone. Neither you nor others. Cool. I read about the multiverse many years ago. But I mean this multiverse thing. This is another thing that was thwarted by you know our books. Brahma Samhita says, you know, millions of universes are coming from the body of Mahavishnu. And says, what? Multiverse is already there here. Millions and millions of universes and there is nothing. And is one fourth of the total creation. Ekapad Vibhuti. Tripad Vibhuti is in the spiritual world. Each planet is bigger than all the universes put together here. And there are millions of such planets in the spiritual world. And Golok Vrindavan is the highest planet. There is no comparison of, you know, multiverse and all this, this compared to that. Books on Multiverse and Krishna Consciousness by Sada Putudas. Okay. Now I'm not so much interested in any of that. <laughs> Shri Prabhupada encouraged such scientific study as per its place in Krishna Consciousness. Prabhupada did not encourage scientific study. He asked his scientist disciples, those who came from scientific background, to present Krishna Consciousness to the scientific community. Not that we study their thing present our thing in their language so they can understand and or they will appreciate or they will explore at least. So to bring them to Krishna consciousness because those scientists are wasting their time. That is the mission. Sai Karthi. Prabhu, your story is very interesting. Nowadays modern scientists think that they are the best thinkers in mankind and they think taking to religion is actually moving backwards. I was having something of a similar kind of a mindset until Bhagavad Gita arrived. That's an interesting point related to your last scripture. APJ Abdul Kalam was one of the few vegetarian Muslims in India. Yeah, I yeah, he was a vegetarian. 
these air water different weapons we saw as child in one avatar series was always thinking if these could be real weapons space is just few hundred kilometers above the surf earth surface if it is nothing if we compare it with the size of the universe yeah Just loving this episode, just like glories of Bhagavad Gita. By the way, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Moon's closest approach to Earth was last night, eighteenth July or August. Anyway, we don't really subscribe to the modern scientists' understanding of the moon and its distance from the Earth. that's another whole controversy on its own this whole space travel is nonsense in the present present age it's used to deceive people nasa is a money laundering company how else can you cheat 86 million dollars a day from taxpayers yeah as well said it's taking millions and millions of dollars and doing some crap experiments sending some photos from so called mars Yes, as child, when seeing too many space movies, was thinking I have to get ready to move to moon when adult. To be lionized or ostracized. I myself considered a lion's place, even when the word ostracized should have been used. Yes, here if banana has even tiny spot of black, they throw it to trash. See, my mother showed us. You know, my mother would do this. Um, she would take banana that was bought like a few days ago, one week ago. It will be almost completely black. Um, so she said, she says, no, no, no. Then she gives us. We are like, hey, no, no, we don't want, we don't want. Then she will open the banana in front of us, and you know, it's a bit. you know it starts to kind of not exactly rot yet but preparing to get rot so it will become slightly translucent you know that kind of thing um so she say she look see look at this fine then we see you see you see it's like that then my mother would just eat the banana and see it's nice you taste you taste and see then we used to taste it used to taste nice even at the, in that stage <laughs> so nobody can convince me not to eat a banana even if it's like kind of black unless it's like really rotten i wouldn't eat but so we were trained up like that again when bhai nandlal presented hanuman natak to guru gobind singh he is reported to have even a coward or weak person who reads this will become a weird warrior I don't know what you are doing in this class. Okay. NASA is the most profitable government government department. Is it because of satellites? Probably. Prabhu, so for sure the scientists haven't gone to moon since Prabhu Pad exposed their mission to go to the moon. Or could they have gone to another planet which is closer to Earth? Probably. <coughs> so yeah. thank you very much for coming on and uh, we'll see you probably on saturday uh with uh, what is that chetana charitamrita and monday with the third part of the muslim scholars conversation with bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur stay tuned for that all right thank you very much hari krishna bhagavad gita ki jai shri prabhu pad ki jai anant kotivaishnava vrind ki jai nitai gaur premanand hari hari bol hari krishna